So you, beautiful people, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, but honestly, I'm on my period and it's my second day and I don't feel like showing my face. And that doesn't usually happen because I'm always happy to look at my face on the screen. That's my favorite thing to do on the internet. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe like later I will make my appearance, but let's make it the recording. I don't know, unit people, what do you think? Is, is it is it going to be possible to just record my voice and put it out there? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, it would be fine. Uh, do you have any presentation uh, for us or any visuals to share? My voice, you just got my voice, enjoy my voice. <laughs> So, uh, you know, you can uh, always, uh, you know, find all the visuals on New Life. I've been sharing my, you know, my metaverse presence on New Life for the past two and a half years. So New Life being newlife.io, the platform that, you know, I'm Dow partnering with. And um, you can just go to the website newlife.io and check that out. Just, just be on that page for yourself. Uh, soak in the energy. Um, all right, so I'll just, uh, you know, share some background about me, but feel free to um, ask me questions at any point with your voice. Um, I'm not going to be checking the chat just yet. And thanks for sharing the link, Dinar. Um, thanks for having me here. It's really an honor. You know, I've been part of the unit community since 2018. Um, I met uh, or I heard of uh, Michael back in 2017, 2018. So he's been part of our, you know, tribe um, and, you know, from the Burning Man to Artesia being the co-living conscious community creation uh, paradise uh, locations around the world to uh, blockchain uh, narrative builder, uh, global influence. So I've been following uh, Michael's work and the team developing for the past several years now. I mean, uh, I've been hosting events in New York for unit uh, dinners and on conferences. And uh, when 2020 hit, also started talking publicly about unit as part of my balanced culture communication strategy. So, uh, so about balanced culture, balanced culture is uh, really a research development uh, and trend prediction agency uh, where we are creating a balanced narrative, uh, whatever that means to us at any given moment about uh, what's the crypto implementation in the collective and in culture specifically. Um, so that includes fashion, that includes art that includes um, music, poetry, anything that has to do with expression and creativity. And that's what my passion is. My passion has always been around um, expression. I've been a professional ballroom dancer uh, in my past, uh, growing up in Moscow and uh, you know, traveling internationally for dance performances and uh, competitions um, till I was about 16. That was my reality. So that's how I got into the fashion world because I started to create my own performance outfits and uh, really got into construction and fashion design early days, like when I was seven or eight. So I um, first launched my collection when I was 16. When I quit my dance world, um, I started to pursue design in Moscow and um, co competed in some competitions in fashion design and then went to study fashion in London and then fashion business in uh, New York. And that's where I stayed and I built my career in New York for the past 12 years. And in New York, I studied specifically buying, merchandising, planning, anything that has to do with business or fashion. But I got really, really deep into you know, how to create my own business by uh, actually launching a website back in was 2017, um, 18, uh, when the websites were still very, oh no, sorry, 28, 27, 28, when the website, you know, you could only buy things online, basically on like either Amazon or net a if you're in fashion. So I started a project called Meet a Dream, bringing uh, US-based designers, local designers in New York to Russia. And I had my you know, business then, it was like a showroom space and also online presence, e-commerce. So I got deep into technology early days when, you know, fashion was still very much of a print you know, and uh, in physical fashion shows. So my interest in, um, you know, conscious consumerism and beautiful production uh, practices also continued with supporting designers like Vika Gazinska, Natasha Liverzian with Awake and other big, big names in the fashion industry and from Russia. 
uh, as a sales and PR director. So I was um, doing the sales and PR for some of the most interesting, in my opinion, brands that were uh, guiding fashion industry into uh, diversification in terms of what aesthetics uh, can be like. You know, if you do know Vika Gazinska, her aesthetic has always been very fairy-like, very, um, you know, ambitious, beautiful, very, um, you know, a dress up. And if you see it, that, that really it's what her persona, that's what sold her narrative. It's her showing up uh, early days as a um, um, as a street style star, right? And uh, one of the several people, in, including Miroslava Duma, who's now, you know, deep founder of the Pangaya, uh, she's also been part of the narrative, creating basically ourselves as models. You know, it's not the fashion designer anymore, really. It's not the uh, influencer uh, on then blog, but it's really the the audience, the people who are participating in fashion are becoming the stars. And that's when I realized that the fashion is always going to be social, meaning that the audience, the customer will always uh, be um, making trends, creating trends. And the fashion designers will be basically like a magic fairy or guiding force uh, creator uh, of this fantasy for the audience. So yes, with Vika Gazinska and, and uh, Miroslava Duma's aesthetic kind of embedded in my consciousness, my level of aesthetics have been really high. <laughs> and I, you know, was living in New York then, and it was just uh, very disappointing for me to see all this incredible deep consumerism and rays of fast fashion uh, back in again, like late 2000s, beginning of 20, uh, you know, 10s. Uh, it was all about the new, the uh, the fashion night out, you know, how we can sell more, you know, how we can create amazing events to sell more. Uh, so my passion slowly started to transition to technology to see how technology can help uh, the narrative of the fashion culture uh, development and uh, slow this fashion in industry down a little bit. Actually, no, ex expanded and expedited by making it more efficient, but slow our consciousness and consumption down. So um, I joined after graduating from FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology, I joined a startup called Tinker Taylor, where we were one of the first ones to use uh, the Claw 3D to create and visualize garments for our customers to play around around and tinker with and uh, customize their own clothing that we produce on demand within a couple of weeks in our um, small studio in um, Garment District in Manhattan. So I was part of the core team in the very beginning of that. And we expanded to working with um, designers like Marquesa and um, Ralph Lauren, like the big, big, big brands that would want to collaborate with us to create custom pieces for uh, our customers. And our customers base would be um, a lot from somehow very, very similar to what the digital fashion these days is, um, you know, like, like, like countries that are developing economies and also East, um, specifically Middle East. So with Middle East, let me just close that. Um, with the Middle East, uh, it was because of the customization of the uh, more modest uh, styles. We could create longer versions of dresses and, uh, you know, with sleeves, uh, creating a beautiful aesthetic, working with designer directly as a Tinker Tailor firm uh, to help uh, customers expand their uh, possibilities in terms of what designer has already created. So listening to the customer was the most important thing for us. And to me, it was like a fairy tale dream uh, being part of the company because we would travel to Dubai, you know, just to present collections to that market and to create parties there that are really, you know, mystical in, in their nature, like creating uh, some experiences that are truly um, memorable for the, uh, the fashion um, uh, audience. Uh, as you see, I use the word audience as default because I don't like using the word consumer. I think we transcended that, transcended that, that term. Um, consumer is, um, is you know, it, it, it is about consuming and the audience, it's about um, actually participating because without the audience, it's impossible to create something actually valuable. The audience is always going to be there. Their consciousness will always be present. Um, okay, now I go to philosophical, let me ground myself. Um, so uh, yes, I started working with Tinker Taylor, then of course, um, it was too 
uh, far away from still the mass adoption. So we weren't able to even to raise uh, capital enough to continue working after a year and a half of operations of this company. And the company um, is founded by my mentor, Ashlag Magnus Dodder, who is this amazing Icelandic superstar um, entrepreneur, and uh, she created Mod Operandi. So the fashion people, you know, Mod Operandi being one of the top luxury retailers that, that is offering this model of pre-ordering designer outfits from the runway and not needing to, you know, produce more than we already produced. I was also uh, working in that company at some point and doing analytics, uh, basically planning and uh, planning being just looking at numbers, what sold, what didn't and planning ahead on what kind of designers and what kind of products that we wanna feature on the website. My background is also very, very analytical. Not many people like understand that, you know, Excel mm -hmm. has been my deepest tool and that's why my interest in technology has expanded from there. Um, now I'm deep into crypto world um, so how I transitioned from uh, the fashion tech into crypto and now how I see the death of fashion being the transformation because death is not really ending, it's the transformation. Um, I'm seeing fashion as a Web3 experience and it's a big statement. Um, so Web3 being basically a metaverse, uh, but it's our version of metaverse. It's not the version of metaverse that the tug, tug is creating, right? Like we don't want that only version uh, that we're basically forcing to um, donate our data uh, to these big organizations and receive nothing but uh, more consumption, um, you know, as incentive in the end. So, so to me, what we're creating with Web3 and with decentralized um, organizations um, that are involved in this, this creation narrative, narrative creation, we are creating basically a layer of the internet and in the future, it is the internet where we stream our consciousness, stream our persona, stream our higher selves into the internet. And we create from our hearts, we're creating from our passion and create projects that are not adding up to consumerism as we know it, but it's rather creating a narrative edu education system, um, spiritual support system and mental health uh, guidance system to help people navigate outside of the matrix. And I'm on the unit, so I understand I can, you know, be a little bit edgy with my communications because I know the kind of people that would watch this um, talk later. But the, the reason why I'm saying that we're going to all, um, you know, leave those companies, you know, that we don't like to work for. I mean, this is really obvious. We're not going to be working for the same, um, you know, narrative people anymore. And I think the fashion world, we have an edge and ability to move faster in a way because we are the creators of the seeds of trends, where the trend seeders, we're not really trend creators anymore because like the influencers are, but they're not the fashion creators mostly. They're stylists maybe, but they're not quite the fashion creators. In the fashion world and people who are involved in the business and the ecosystem and the community um, organization, we have an opportunity to direct actually. This is a direction process. It's like creating a new movie. Uh, collectively, like a big documentary, where we as a collective, as a fashion world, has created a new universe on Web3 that is aesthetically beautiful. It is pleasant to be around. It is actually pleasant to look our, at ourselves on the screens there. You know, the reason why I'm not turning on my camera is because I'm looking at the sun right now and I'm just, you know, channeling and I don't need to look at myself and look and be self-conscious on how I look on the screen. I think we're going to transcend that. We will have avatars that are representing us. You know, I do want to save my um, maybe like 29 year old me, you know, out there floating around while my body becomes different. And only people who see me in person can see my actual, uh, you know, look. So these kind of things I'm thinking about a lot. I'm thinking about what my children will see on the internet, what they will want to consume, what kind of education materials that I'd like to provide for them. Um, and I think the fashion world has, again, a, a possibility to create and lead the narrative for our future generations of what's to come in the new layer of the internet that we call Web3 right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, ask me questions at this point, I can round myself deeper um, and, you know, talk a little bit more on what I'm uh, focusing now physically, or I can ask, answer your questions about Web3 and the blockchain, anything that has to do with that. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Natalia. Um, that was a, a wonderful introduction of what you're doing and what you have been doing. Um, 
an impressive experience. Of course, yeah, I actually would love uh, you to go a little more technical uh, if you can. And also I have a second question is you were asking, uh, you were writing comments here uh, about the digital art and um, supporting, like what your vision on that, uh, that digital art is supporting, um, uh, let's say that direction, which we don't want to see like over consumerism and uh, like you said, egocentric um, personalities probably. Uh, that's a that's that's one of those questions that keeps me up at night, to be honest, Lesia. Like honestly, and I and I did tweet about that. I tweet very edgy things, like I would comment, uh, you know, in my my real language. And uh, yeah, it's it's hard to answer that because I think we're in the process of figuring out what's healthy, what's balanced for us. Well, actually, balance is such a dynamic term. For a lot of people, balance means um, you know one thing, and for me, balance means maybe another thing and how am I supposed to be a person who calls a company balanced culture like these questions that still pop up in my head and um, I think what's most important is to um, surround ourselves with uh, mirrors with people that we uh, resonate with uh, whose uh, language whose frequency whose uh, presence is inspiring um, mentors uh, teachers um students who ask great questions and from that perspective i think we're able to focus and direct our energy um towards sharing uh with each other uh, vulnerably how we are doing you know i shared with you that i am on my you know second day of my period like i am in my yin space and my feminine i'm you know preparing to have children like this is this is a big deal i'm not really quite in a public space right now and um and, and, and that's what I'm asking myself a lot is, what does it mean to embody, a, again, a, a person who has a, a body of a woman? And what our voice uh, as um, the half of the population that are women um, has to do with creation of that balanced narrative. So my biggest goal and ambition, I guess, is to uh, see at least half of the population, all the women, part of the balanced culture storytelling, uh, because we have a, a perspective that um, the men just do not. You know, I'm okay. I'm here in Lisbon, attending all these crypto conferences here. Right, there's a lot happening in terms of crypto building the narrative here right now in physical, and uh, that's another reason why I don't want to show my face is because I'm so public right now already and going out there and just do the fight. You know. Um, less than 8% are women, just how it is. And uh, that makes me feel uncomfortable actually in my body. It's not because I'm uh, conscious and self-conscious of my body. I think I'm transcended that, like I love myself the way that I am. Um, and I'm petite, I'm not quite modelly looking. I'm not that one of like Russians that look like a super model star. And that's always been a problem in my consciousness. I've been bulimic, um, you know, in my life. I've had, you know, issues with my mental health in terms of eating disorder. And uh, that's been going on in my life as I was part of the fashion world. <laughs> and, mm. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, when I transcended into the, fa the, the tech world, because I, you know, didn't share with you, I was working in a marketplace. It was a competitor to Farfetch uh, called Spring. And we did integrations with uh, over 2000 brands on one platform and doing integrations. And this, this is the technical side of me uh, being a technical project manager, you know, knowing the language, both from the technical side and from the practical side, I felt more balanced working for that company than for any other fashion company in the world, because that tech company was chill. <laughs> like, you know, we had another one incentive for me to come to work in the morning uh, before 11, okay, uh, was because they uh, wrap up with the breakfast every day, uh, you know, at 11. So I just like, okay, I need to come 10 minutes before 11 to have some breakfast and start my day. And then I would meditate for at least one hour, okay, every day uh, at 1 p.m. instead of lunch. We'll still have lunches in our company, but I would just grab after my meditation and every day that was my practice. So I felt very balanced working at the company and I was paid more as a contractor. Okay. I was paid more than any other place in my fashion career until I started my consultancy. So, and I would left, leave uh, my work at 5 PM, no problem. And we would, you know, 
uh, go to meetups and uh, create more narratives around where technology is going. So my lifestyle was pretty balanced. And that's when my um, bulimic, I guess, like mental health disorder has stopped. It also helped me to understand, you know, what my balance is around work and life. And uh, yes, I did need to meditate at least once an hour as once I'm in when, once I'm in the office space, uh, because it was a lot of energy. It was about 200 people working for that company, and I would, you know, always surround myself with so many people in the open floor. Um, it's just a lot of energy to take, and being uh, conscious about these things is important. I think 2020 taught us as the world that it's actually really nice to work from home and really nice to be less um, exposed to public, so we can focus on what it means to be holistic, balanced, well, uh, rounded selves within our own space, so we can come out in the world in our best superhuman, you know, suits and uh, be the greatest versions of ourselves with every person that we come to. So yeah, those are the things. I mean, I want to go to technical uh, aspects of things. So uh, maybe you can direct uh, like a more specific question. Would you like to know technically around, you know, the web three? Because I talked about balance, right? I hope that was clear. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, why, why I would like to hear a little more technical about Web3 because I'm not a technical person and I'm learning um, and this direction is really interesting for me. So, yeah. Uh, such a wide question still. <laughs> Um, all right, so, uh, okay, so if you think about internet, right, it's like a collective consciousness, it's like Akashic Records, if you're into spirituality, Akashic Records being like a place where all our thoughts or our actions or our deeds uh, in this reality are um, reflected or, or man monitored, so the internet is that as well. In the beginning, it was a write only thing. So we would like create a website and these things would just stay there like blogs or, uh, I mean, blogs is already kind of a web too. Um, okay, there will be like publishing um, companies, you know, they would, they would go online and they would create like a Vogue uh, digital version and there will be no interaction with the audience. And then the web too is when the, act the interaction with the audience started to appear. So meaning that there started to be more forums like you know you said people can share their opinions on what they're reading and what they're exposed to and of course social media started to emerge and social media being you know the you know the facebooks and the twitters of the world um where you know we can actually create uh content you know and i remember i think i think you russian speakers know the boom of the uh, live internet Right. I remember how everyone had the blogs, the diaries. And uh, yeah, I was I had the diary when I was like, I don't know, nine, ten. <laughs> like, I was writing things into the Internet and it was like super normal to me in my culture. And uh, of course, when, you know, these tools that are more advanced appeared like Twitter, uh, it was fun to share things uh, in a shorter format and train ourselves to communicate on the Internet in a more precise and short ways. Okay, and the third layer of the internet, and <laughs> that's the, the web three, is that we basically transcend the whole idea of the internet and we um, not only share our data, but we are responsible for owning our data. And ownership is a tricky term. What is ownership? Uh, to me, ownership is that um, my uh, work is recognized as mine. And, um, and my community is recognized as uh, my community and not some other community. And it's also a, still a big term. So what, what helps with that is uh, the transparency that blockchain technology provides. So blockchain technology being basically a database uh, where each transaction is recorded on a ledger. And uh, that ledger is a representation of that transaction um, uh, confirmation, basically. And uh, that I think is very fun and powerful just to, to kind of conceptually visualize the uh, the web three is is that we basically have like a, like a robot <laughs> like a bot system that uh, tracks uh, all of our actions online and uh, makes sure that it tracks the way that is not only taking the information and then um, taking it over to the corporations like it what happens in the web two and that's something um, that we can talk a lot about privacy concerns uh, on the web two that we have right now and maybe that's why I'm not showing my face I don't know uh, and uh, then the web three is like everything just 
transparent already. Uh, you know, there's nothing really owned by anyone. Everything is collective. But uh, the IP, the intellectual property is really, uh, you know, uh, you can track the source, okay? I mean, at least uh, the source that that person is providing. And um, okay, let me just ground this example into my work. Okay, so I'm the kind of crazy person that takes a lot of screenshots and like intense amount of screenshots, like too many. <laughs> and I used to do that like before, you know, 2020. But in 2020, what happened is that I started to really, really go into research um, the collective consciousness on where we as humanity are going in terms of digital presence and communications. And I was, recorded, I was recording and uh, taking screenshots of communications that resonated with me. So I was like basically a collector of um, messages that felt like timeless, that felt quantum, that felt like even if I share them in five years and I share them to my children, they will be like, yeah, it's a good, yeah, it's good truth. It's, it's powerful. So I started sharing all these things. They, you know, they could be spiritual, they could be edgy uh, technical things like, like, you know, uh, education around uh, cryptography and uh, you know, blockchain technology, that as well. But it could be just some fun, you know, screenshots of my communications with friends that I felt like, wow, this is a quantum in, you know, like experience that we're having here. Let's, let me share it to the collective and um, showcase the magic that we have to do, we can do together. So this is what I call digital shamanism. So being a collective, Collector of these experiences and then consciously, actively, and um, intentionally sharing them on the platform that is a Web3 platform, New Life. New Life is based on uh, the blockchain technology, NewCoin, and uh, you can see newcoin.org for that um, you know, information of the actual blockchain and uh, what kind of partners we are looking to work with in the blockchain space. But basically, uh, what I do is I take those screenshots and collect the data from the Web 2 and put it into the Web 3. And uh, so basically what I'm doing in the balanced culture communications strategy is uh, picking and choosing messages and the frequency of these messages, frequency being like the actual energy uh, level that I feel and connect to, but also frequency of how often do I post into the, uh, the Web3 ecosystem of new life. Um, and uh, there, uh, it, it, I mean, it, it is a very visual platform. It's very um, intuitive and very sexy, very aesthetically uh, driven uh, platform, much, much more aesthetically driven than uh, what we see on uh, the Instagram of the world, right? Um, and actually much more aesthetically driven than the current uh, more mainstream narrative of where they word nfts are you know and the digital fashion is um to me digital fashion is um all the pictures that i take of my clothing because um as a founder of balanced fashion which is a consultancy of the, the past five years i've been developing this particular consultancy and trend prediction agency on what is fashion industry's narrative for the future to me every single piece that i own is a historical piece a piece that i cherish and love that i would love to to see my children also potentially wearing you know and my community also sharing because these pieces i invest in um yeah these these pieces are historical museum pieces and they're not available for sale there may be available for exchange but i do uh, and and i do a lot of picture taking uh content creation uh creation of art piece that is photography okay and i create uh, layouts of these pieces uh intentionally and shamanically to basically upload messages to our collective consciousness on what to consume how to consume and uh why actually not to consume how to enjoy fashion and be uh, grateful for what we already created and stop creating new fashion until we as an industry figure out the way to actually completely stop the production cycle and take every single garment and piece of textile that we ever produced and upcycle it into the next paradigm of aesthetics for the physical fashion. And the digital fashion is a, just a distraction. It is a fucking distraction for us to not move to a direction of physicality and figuring out the fuck we've done as a fashion industry in terms of creation of all the waste. We've produced more clothing for the next generations to wear than we possibly can consume already. And yes, 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 companies have been burning, burning clothing, just not to sell them or not to send them to the African continent where the African continent's communities are completely overwhelmed by the waste and the trash that they're received from the Western world because this is completely fucks up their whole ecosystem in terms of 
ooh, like they don't know how to deal with our waste. This is a, this is a, like the, the African continents have become basically trash cans for the Western world's consumerism. Okay, I get really passionate. You stop me. We were starting to talk about technology and Web3 and I got back into the consumption. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Patient and um, yeah, it was uh, really insightful. Um, yeah, very, very, very appreciate your presence and your excitement about um, the topic you, you're talking about. Uh, it's uh, really, really interesting. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. having, you having me. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you want uh, our audience to connect with you, maybe you can drop your contact details in the chat. Mm -hmm.